Hello, everyone. Welcome to Raven Star's Witching Hour once again. I am your host and head witch, Miss Solaris Blue Raven at the helm. I want to give a shout out to everybody at Revolution Radio, staff, producers, and listeners, and everyone in the chat room, and thank everyone for bringing the magic through the airwaves once again. We are 100% listener supported, so if you like what you're listening to, please click on the donate button. We certainly appreciate it. Um, the, we will be taking calls the second hour. That number is going to be 347 688 And my special guest this evening is Jane Doherty. Yeah, and Jane Doherty um, named one of the top 20 psychics by Dr. Hans Holzer. She is the author of Awakening the Mystic Gift, starred in the international TV show Dead Tenants, a hypno counselor, and is leading a special spiritual tour to Egypt in September. Um, she has lectured at all of the ancient crystal skull conferences organized by Oracle Stone Productions. Some of her media credits as a psychic medium include Fox Network News, CNN, The Today Show, Coast to Coast Radio, New York Times, Mystery Magazine, Women's World Weekly, In Light Times, and Wisdom Magazine. She will soon be seen in a supernatural thriller called Amy She Can See the Possessed, which will be released in 2013 worldwide, worldwide in theaters. Her passion is empowering others, and her website is janedoherty.com. Jane, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to be on with you. Oh, I'm so excited to have you on. I'm just thrilled. So, um, How are you doing this evening? I'm doing just fine. <laughs> good, good. It's nice to hear your voice. Um, how did you get involved in the psychic work? Were you were you born with this gift, or is this something you have developed over time? Actually, it's something I developed. I, I think we all have the seeds of the ability. We're born with it. Uh, I wasn't psychic as a child. I think I had a lot of more uh, religious experiences. But it was probably in my very early 30s, I started to go to psychics at malls. And they would all tell me that I was psychic and I would be a famous psychic and I was a total skeptic at that time. I was a high school teacher, so I was skeptical. Mm. And after 150 telling me all the same thing, I decided the only way to prove or disprove whether psychic ability was real or not was to attempt to develop it. And that's what happened. That's so I actually developed it. That's awesome. And how, how do you define a psychic? I define a psychic as someone who has extrasensory perception and can either see the past or see the future. To me, using the word psychic would be seeing the future. The other aspect, sometimes we're called psychic mediums, and we can do both mm -hmm. to uh, make communication with the spirit world and also see the future. Right. And you're a medium also, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you get the whole thing? Are you clairsentient too, or do you just get the whole ball of wax? Or yes, okay. I'm clairsentient and uh, clairvoyant, clairaudient. Um, the feeling part of me is is very strong, very very strong. And then I think it goes into getting images, <laughs> you know, getting pictures and images is the way that I receive it. But right. the feeling part is strong mm -hmm. uh, in me. Do you do the automatic part. writing as well? And Oh, years ago I did, but mm -hmm. now, you know, I don't use that anymore because I can speak directly. Mm -hmm. And I do and I do a lot of ghost investigations, too. And, of course, that's where the feeling aspect comes in because when I'm near spirit energy, my stomach will expand anywhere um, of three to five inches. Wow. And that's how I locate spirits. I actually go in with my stomach first. That's really amazing. But is that so like it? Uh, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, good. I was going to ask, is that your, um, when you say your solar plexus, is that when you're picking up energetically? Is, is it more of an attack, or does it feel just like that's your benchmark for just scanning things? Um, well, it actually, you, you will see it expand, mm -hmm. and it starts low. So it's not just in the gut. It, it starts from very low in the stomach, goes right up to underneath my breastbone. Wow. And you, you physically see it. I look like I'm not I'm pregnant uh, when this happens. Mm -hmm. And I can actually tell whether it's a male, female, or child spirit based on the way it's gripping me. Oh, wow. So that's how, and I've been doing that since, I'd say it was like 1988. Oh, my goodness. That's a long that this time. has been going on. So, and that's how I locate spirits. I let the stomach know. It's interesting, as I've recently found out, that in Great Britain, they've done some research and they have found out that the stomach actually has its own brain. Hmm. 
So that may be what's going on there. And the other thing is that years ago, in ancient times, the um, psychic center was not in the pineal gland. It was the gut. Mm -hmm. They referred to that as the psychic center. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just you know what and of course I'm a sensitive person I don't read cards Mm -hmm. so when I'm doing a reading I'm actually taking that person's energy field feeling it and bringing it to me actually bringing it to my gut Mm -hmm. and then then I'll receive images so I think when I just did my first ghost investigation this just happened well it's been that way ever since that's amazing Amazing. so it's an odd thing but it works yeah it's a great antenna (laughs) (laughs) Do you normally interact with spirits and ghosts on a daily basis? How is how is it life for you every day? Um, no, I keep it very closed down. I have my own a way of going into my mode, and I just keep it separate simply because I also lecture. Mm-hmm. And what would happen is you'd go in a room and you'd be lecturing, and then you'd be seeing spirits all around people. Mm-hmm. So I prefer to keep it shut off, and I have my uh, method of getting in when I want to communicate. Mm -hmm. I learned a valuable lesson years ago. Somebody who uh, was also psychic when I was beginning who wanted to help me go deeper. Mm -hmm. And I allowed myself to open up to that, and the person wasn't so nice. The person was actually pulling my soul out of my body. Oh, no. And ever since then, it to me, it's uh, I've kept it very closed down Mm -hmm. because spirits can be like an errant child that you have to discipline. Mm -hmm. And this particular man had no control over the spirits. Wow. And, you know, he just talked to them and did whatever they they wanted him to do. Mm -hmm. And I was part of that. Very scary moment. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. So um, I've disciplined, you know, I'm very disciplined with it. Mm Mm-hmm. That's a wise decision on that one. And, and your description of a ghost or disembodied spirit, I mean, how would you define a ghost? To me, it's its part of the energy that uh, is left after the body is gone. But, of course, you can have one, the energy will have a consciousness. If it has a consciousness, then that spirit knows uh, you're there and it can interact with you. Or it can just be part of a haunting phenomenon. And then you can't reach it. It's just doing the last thing it did when it uh, when it died, and it just becomes part of that uh, haunting phenomenon. Mm-hmm. Is that like a disembodied spirit? Is that the same thing or no? Yeah, it's it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And of course, I think today we make a difference. I mean, when I began, we called everything a ghost. I think mm-hmm. today we refer to spirits and ghosts, and we we make a delineation. I think that. We speak of spirits more when we're, we're talking about uh, relatives and mediumship and things like this and ghosts more in a haunted place, in a building. Mm-hmm. Right. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. And you also do the, the seances, right? Yes. Yeah. And yeah. How, just explain your seances. How successful are those? Oh, they're very successful. Awesome. Um, it's, I'll get someone for everyone that is participating in the seance. That's usually what my goal is, and if it doesn't come in normally, then those that have not had anyone come in, I'll focus on a particular person for them. Mm -hmm. But it will come in because of the stomach reaction. I would be considered um, more of a physical medium. Mm -hmm. So there's always phenomenon that goes on in a seance. Mm -hmm. You'll get smells. You'll get uh, spirits may sit on your lap, and you'll feel the pressure you'll pick up on in your body how a spirit died. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of things that go on in the seances. Oh, wow. And, and actually, does, do you take that on physically later on, or how do you move that out pretty well? No, I move that out yeah. pretty well. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't ever keep it. It's there. It's done. It's, you know, you close it up, and it, it leaves. Very good. Wow, I'd love but to have you over. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, there's some very interesting things, I could tell you one particular story so that you know how spirits speak. I think most people think, you know, you're going to hear it, you're going to hear the direct words that they're saying. My experience is that's not what they do, because here is where we have the voice box. The other side doesn't have a physical mechanism to speak. Mm -hmm. So when you're in the spirit world, you're really communicating in pictures. It's the same thing with other spirits, you would be projecting a picture to that spirit. So spirits 
speak in pictures. So in this one seance, uh, this young girl, and she had been to many of my seances, and her mother always comes through. She lost her mother at a young age. So this is probably about the fifth seance, and her mother already come through, but she decided at the end that she wanted one more thing, and I said, what's that? And she goes, I want to know the nickname that my mother called me. So I looked at her, raised my eyebrows, and said, well, we're at the end of the seance. I'll try, because, you know, you lose energy as it goes on. Mm-hmm. I said, I'll go in there, and I'll see if I can. I said, I can't guarantee that. So I go in, and I'm struggling, and I'm waiting and waiting, and all I kept, kept getting was a picture of an elephant. Hmm. I said, well, how am I going to say this to her? I said, well, I, I gave up, and I came out of it and said, I'm sorry, I can't get anything. It won't come. I said, because the only thing I'm getting is a picture of an elephant, and she burst out crying. Aww. Her mother used to call her Dumbo. <laughs> so wow. that's a clear example of how a spirit will communicate. Mm -hmm. It wasn't going to say Dumbo to me. Her mother was showing me an elephant. Wow. That's incredible. So that's that's the way they will communicate. Right. But do you you verbally ask the question then, and then they show you a picture? Is that how how it works? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'll ask the question, and I'll just stay quiet, waiting. And it's the same thing in a seance. I, I might not be asking a specific question, but I'll be asking for someone of, you know, a deceased relative of, of, of one of the loved ones that's present in the circle. Mm-hmm. Well, and then you go from there and what you receive. Amazing. Have you ever had a negative experience with a seance? Anything creepy crawly? No, I haven't had anything negative. That's good. Uh, all the years that I've done seances, I've had a possession that I had to take care of mm. that I didn't realize what was going on at first. It goes back years ago, and I had, you know, I wasn't even sure I believed in possession back then. Mm. And what happened is um, this girl's brother came through, and I knew what it was because I jumped up and went behind her to get close to her so that I could feel with my stomach. Mm-hmm. And as I did, it, I was trying to trap him, and I knew it was a possession because I asked her if, if as he was speaking through her, mm-hmm. and I asked if he forgave those that were here on the earth, and he said no. I knew he hadn't seen the light. Mm-hmm. I knew what I had. And it was difficult because I didn't want anybody in the circle to realize I had never done this before. Mm-hmm. That was my, my big concern, because then you're going to feed energy to the spirit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then ultimately, I was able to release him and get him to look into the light, and then the angels and, and other spirits would come and help him. But what did happen is I wasn't able to move at first after that, because so much energy was used. Mm-hmm. And the three people in front of me, including his sister, also couldn't move at first. We were just like, I can't explain it, the energy that went through us that just kept us in that motion. I had to get others in the seance to unlock our hands because it was just so tight. And then once we did that, we were able to move and and come fully out of it. And then what I learned was this, and had I known this, I would never have allowed her in the seance. Mm -hmm. Apparently her brother committed suicide and blew his head off. Oh, wow. what he did after trying to kill his parents. Oh. And um, so he was possessing her all those years. Her children had ill health. She had ill health. And mm. she had become so... And then when she said she used to look in the mirror and she would see her brother's face on wow. the side of her. Then other times she would look in the mirror and she would see his face and not hers. Hmm. Had she ever said that to me, I would never have let her in the seance. Wow. And I had to quickly hypnotize her before she left because she felt naked Hmm. for all those years of having that spirit on her. Mm -hmm. Um, She just felt naked, and I was afraid she was going to invite him back. So I quickly, you know, looked into her eyes and quickly did a hypnotic technique to, to get her into a better space. And I did, and then I checked with her, and a couple of weeks later, she was fine. She was in her normal case, and there was no more problems. My goodness. How do you put them under hypnosis? I mean, what do you do? Is it pretty quick? Well, that was, yeah. I just, you know, I had no no time to do anything that was, you know, long. Mm -hmm. I just 
quickly looked into her eyes. I had her look into my eyes so that it was a eye fixation method just to look at me. Mm-hmm. And so as she looked at me, I quickly began the induction to quickly get her under. Nice. And, it, you know, it worked. I was able to very quickly do it. Very good. And you actually got rid of him by allowing him to forgive and go into the light? Is that yes. It? Yes. Okay. I had to get him to look through the light. He had not looked at the light, so he was still in a very dark space. Mm-hmm. But he was still angry mm-hmm. from here. So I actually used the physical body and the energy of mine to push him off of her and to kind of like, you know, break that energy bond. And mm-hmm. then once I did that, then all I had to do was get him to look a certain way and the other spirits and angelic beings were ready to get to take him. Oh, that's And that's what happened. Wow. So, and I'm breathing when that happens. You know, like mm-hmm. I'm using the energy of my body and I'm kind of pushing that energy. Mm-hmm to, to kind of release it from her. Right. That's amazing. Um, the listeners in the chat room want to know your website once more. It is, it is Jane Doherty.com. Jane Doherty.com. Yeah. It's D it's D O H E R T Y. Okay. Sometimes it's spelled wrong. Did I pronounce it right? Yes. Good. Okay. <laughs> I was wondering about that. Okay. Yay. That's, that's fascinating. Your, your information is just blowing me out of orbit. It's really interesting. Um, that, so that, is that one of the most intense psychic experiences yes. you think you've had? Yeah. That I think is probably the most intense. And the other one uh, is the seance at the Lizzie Borden House oh, in Massachusetts. Wow. And I went there with the Philadelphia Inquirer. And on the way there, we're all in the car together, and on the way there, uh, they asked me, if we could get you in the O.J. house where the murder happened, would you go there and do an investigation in a seance? I went, Sure. <laughs> Well, when I finished Lizzie Borden House, I said, no way. Mm-hmm. This is the first time I was doing a seance in a place where a murder had taken place. Mm-hmm. So that had a whole different energy field. When you do it in a seance that's not in a place, you could pick up, but you could pick up without all the emotions. Mm-hmm. And what happened in that seance, it was Abby Borden came through me, but I actually released her spirit from confusion. Hmm. So she used my body, and I was, like, wrenching in pain off of the chair, twisting as though I was in a struggle. Hmm. So I was I was her at that point. Mm-hmm. She was using my body, and it was like what she was going through in the struggle as she hmm. was being killed. Wow. So it was intense. It was very intense. Oh and so I told them, no, that's okay. <laughs> There's no way yeah. I'd do that. Yeah, did did you clear the place? I mean, after the seance, did yes. you think some of that mood? Yeah, okay, that's good. Some oh, yeah, that. yes. Very good. Have you ever been to you the... Have... Oh, go ahead. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. My wheels are spinning so fast because there's so many questions I want to ask you, but um, have you been to the Saratoga Battlefield? No. Mm-mm. Oh, okay, you should check that out because it's very haunted. Yeah. Yeah. I've been to Gettysburg, but I haven't been to okay. that one. Yeah, you might want to try Saratoga sometime. It's I was there a long, long time ago, but very interesting. I heard muskets and all sorts of things going off. Yeah, yeah that's kind of that's neat. That's neat. Yeah, <laughs> this is fascinating. Yeah, well, it sounds like you're very powerful in order to be able to take on that kind of energy and then transmute it. So. That's, that's yes, I, I I think it all has to do with my stomach. There's a reason for it. So. Mm-hmm. It's the breathing and mm-hmm. everything that go that goes on with it, and I'm not afraid. Right. I think that's a very big key. Yeah. And I'll place everything under under God, under higher power, mm-hmm. before I do anything. And so I think that's you know part of it. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then you know the solar plexus is the chi energy too. That's where we, you know, as a martial artist, I mean, we move from our center. So that makes a lot of sense insofar as how you can build up a force field there, and uh, use that. Yeah, that's what I'm using is I'm breathing. Mm-hmm. That's where it's coming from mm-hmm. as I'm pushing. Yeah. So I guess I've never, I haven't known that about um, martial yeah. arts. Yeah, like Qigong right. exercises or Tai Chi, you know, they move from the center. Okay. And I'm a martial artist, so I, I know that you okay, know, build so a lot of energy there. Yeah, but you always move from the center, and um, it sounds like that's where your force is, you know, your energy. So that's really good. That's awesome. You probably make a very good martial artist, actually. Um, probably chi master. <laughs> You're a chi master in disguise. You don't even know it, do you? <laughs> probably wasn't a bad life. I bet you were. Oh, yeah, I bet you're an old soul. We had that discussion a little bit, but, yeah, you can tell. <laughs> yeah, you've been around, for sure. So how do you awaken, awaken your clients to their psychic abilities? I mean, is, is that an easy thing to do? or? Um, it's a process. Uh, in fact, I'm teaching a course here in two weeks on, you know, the first 
level of it in awakening the psychic ability. There's like about four levels to, to it. So I have about 35 hours of instruction nice. in, in developing the ability. And there are, you know, a lot of people don't realize that there are skills mm-hmm. that it's, you can really take it apart and learn through skills. And the skills are observation, um, is sensitivity, and uh, concentration is probably the key. And then, of course, there's interpretation. Hmm. But concentration is, is, to me, the key because when you're getting into the psychic mode, you've got to concentrate. Mm-hmm. Because I don't read cards, I do it clairvoyantly. So you're, you have to learn how to concentrate in order to stay in that space long enough to receive the image. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so these are all s- skills that I try to develop along with, of course, your meditation and other types of things. But mm-hmm. um, anybody can practice concentration even with, um, let's say, looking at, like, articles mm-hmm. and then closing your eyes and seeing how many you can write down and remember. Mm-hmm. So it's really, you know, like a memory skill along right. with it. Yes, excellent. In opening up the ability. And where where exactly are you teaching this class so so people can know? Oh, uh, it's it's in New Jersey. Is it? Okay. So yeah, it's in New Jersey. Um, if okay. anybody is interested in this area, they can right. email me, and I can give them the, the address. What about internet classes? Are you going to do anything like that? Virtual schools or? Uh, I am toying with it. I am definitely toying with it. Okay. If I can get my son to uh, do the webmastering stuff that needs to be done. Yeah. But I think probably by the summertime, I think there's even a way of doing it maybe through Skype. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm toying with these ideas because there are people I know at different parts of this, uh, the country that would love to be able to open up the ability. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I have a, a lot of hours. And I because I taught myself is everything I did mm-hmm. to develop the ability. It's fabulous. Yeah, I know a lot of people are afraid of their gifts. Sometimes, you know, they start to get psychic and then they they shut it off if they get a vision they don't want to see or something like that. So, I think having you as a guide for them would be fantastic. Yeah. And what people don't know, and see, I was president of the Jersey Society of Parapsychology for years, hmm. and that was a question that was always asked of me. Like, people would come, and they would have the ability open, but they're always getting bad things, and they get frightened of it. Uh, what I've learned is when you're first beginning and you, you've you opened it up, let's say, on your own, you'll stay stuck there. It's once you've developed it fully, you don't tap into that bad anymore. Mm-hmm. Then you're able to tap into the good and see the future. Mm-hmm. Okay. Where when you're just in that beginning stage or that's where you stop and afraid to go forward, that, that, that's what you'll do is you'll just tap into the bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I think it's important for people to have some kind of instruction. I, I do, I do know that there are people out there who go with, um, you know, they 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 try to learn these things and then they get um, pulled into the lower astral and a lot of density and you know they're not connected to a higher consciousness, which you know derails them a little bit. So yeah, I really support your work. So keep me posted on that if you do. Oh, I will. School, I'll help you promote that for sure. Um, I know I will definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you assist your clients in teaching them how to shield from unwanted en- energies, or sure, yeah. sure, sure. You always have to protect yourself. There's a, a lot of things, even in 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 the house. Uh, like I've recently had to go to a friend's house where there was something. You know, even people can send you negative energy. Mm-hmm. So there was something that was going on that was feeding spirit energy and was causing activity. And I was able to realize, you know, figure it out that it's other people's energy coming out at the person. Mm-hmm. So I had him put up mirrors nice. uh, in the corners of the, in the room, like the outside corners, but inside. Mm-hmm. In other words, the way your house would be those outside corners. Let's say you have a ranch, so there's four outside corners. Um, so the mirror would be put inside, but it, the reflective part would be face the corner. Nice. And it's just a small thing uh, at the bottom. Mm-hmm. And what that does is anything being re- sent to you gets reflected back. Mm-hmm. So you're creating no no harm, but you're protecting your surroundings right. and protecting your, yourself. Yeah, very good. Too. 
Yeah, I'm a firm believer in, in force fields and shields and grids and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> There's even something good that I've just come upon. I'm gonna um, I'm never gonna order it and sell it too. Is selenite, but selenite uh-huh. in a spiral shape. Oh wow! Because the spiral shape is ancient in the sense of the way energy moved and how they represented it. Mm-hmm. But that spiral shape will keep the energy flow, so it protects and and um, it keeps everything flowing positively in the house. Mm, that's wonderful. Yeah, I love selenite. I have some too. I have the the rods. They're more like wands, but yeah, mm-hmm. it's a great idea. Very much so. And you do lecture at the Crystal Skull conferences. Speaking of, um, are you also one of the caretakers for the Crystal Skull? Yes. How does that work? Mm-hmm. Oh, you do. How do you get selected yeah. for that? Or do the crystals choose you? Or uh, well, work? each one of us has received the skull in its own way. Hmm. Um, so there, it's we just call each other guardians and not owners. It's just mm-hmm. it's just a term that's used. But each of us have have their own story and how it was acquired. Um, mine was in 1987. I went to Mexico and I really had no idea at any of that. I, I wasn't even into crystals at the time. And I was walking in a store looking for something to bring home for a souvenir. And there wasn't anything in the store. And as I turned the corner, there was a glass case with a key, and it said artifacts. Mm. And I just felt this pulsating, and I went over to it, and there were these two small skulls. And um, so I purchased everything in the case, which was two small skulls, two black jaguar statues, and this uh, Quetzalcoatl, which I think was a shaman. Oh, nice. A feathered serpent. So that's how I got my <laughs> ancient crystal skulls. Oh, wow. And, and you're actually, do you become the medium for these crystal skulls, or how does that work? Yes, yes. You do. Okay. You become, uh, you become a medium. Uh, you can channel information. It, the energy is connected to you. It, it creates a resonating field. Mm-hmm. Now, I use my skulls in all my readings. Mm. They're always present. If I do a seance, they are always present. Right. If I do a um, ghost investigation, even for TV, they were carried in a case. Mm you know, on my shoulder when I do it, because they are a form of protection, Mm -hmm. but they also uh, create a resonant energy, so you're able to connect with other energies more easily, Mm -hmm. you know, with them. Yeah. It reminds me of the Atlanteans, too. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I I believe they work with the crystal skull energetics a lot. Yeah. So that's probably an old Atlantean uh, template that's coming through or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I'd love to go to one of those crystal skull conventions. I'm going to have to do it the next time because it's just incredible. Oh, it's imagine. awesome. Yeah. It's awesome to be with all the different skulls. You just feel the energy. And, and each one is so different. Mm-hmm. So uh, you really do you really do feel it. It's wonderful. Nice. Is yours uh, quartz? Or what kind do you have? Yes, mine is Maya is clear quartz. Hmm. And little Alden is um, is rudulated quartz, so he looks gold. Maya wow. is is female. Uh, the style of mine is different. Like the style of mine is like the amethyst skull on Ma, and because it has a triangle nose, it has the indentations on the side, and the skull is more elongated hmm. than uh, upright. And what makes Maya different is that she has three rows of teeth. Oh wow! Which is which is rare, which is unusual. Yeah, interesting. Did you ever figure out what that was about, or? Well, I trace it to, and I did some research uh, in in ancient times. Uh, they considered anything with three rows of teeth as supernatural, mm. and supposedly the mythical figure Hercules had three rows of teeth. Nice. And then it goes back to the Dagon tribe in Mali, who believed that the gods, the first gods, were amphibious gods mm-hmm. that came that had three rows of teeth. And your ancient Chinese believed the first gods were also amphibian, with mm-hmm. three rows of teeth. So it, it, it's kind of interesting. You know, mm-hmm. we don't think of that as gods, but whatever they saw as amphibious. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is rather interesting. Oh yeah, it's fascinating. When you think about all of that. Yeah, I could listen mm-hmm. to you for hours about this. Your your wellspring of information. I'm really absorbing it. <laughs> I hope my little tentacles aren't bothering you. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I was ask you now. You do the tours to Egypt now. Is this this is the first tour? Or you've done this all along, or no? This is the first tour. 
Okay. And it's going to be very different because uh, it's from a spiritual perspective. But what's different about it is I'm going to be doing the first ever seance in the Great Pyramid. Oh, sweet. And we're going to be doing, you know, people will have the uh, the ability to capture an AVP mm. because we're alone in the Great Pyramid for two hours. Mm-hmm. And also we're going inside the Sphinx, which the public is not allowed to do. Mm. There's special permission. And inside the Sphinx, I've been given a symbol years ago in a vision that had to do with the Hall of Records. Mm. I didn't even know about the Hall of Records at the time when it was given to me. <laughs> And then in 1999, I was uh, visiting Nick Nasserino, who was, you know, that was the head of the Crystal Skull Society. And he had a great big uh, crystal skull on his table. And he said, there's an image in there. He said, well, we don't know what it is. And when I looked in, it's the same image that I was given in a vision. Wow. So, and I know that I'm supposed to go into the Sphinx and look for that image somewhere. Now, we only have a half an hour, mm. so I'm going to be uh, having that on a piece of paper for everyone mm. so that I give it to everyone to just scour inside the Sphinx mm-hmm. to help look for this, um, this symbol in any way that it's in there. That's amazing. I'm sure you'll find it. Oh. So we'll be doing that, and it'll be two other uh, seances that we'll do at um, in Luxor in the mm. Valley of the Kings. I'll be teaching courses. I'll be teaching psychic development. Uh, it'll be a Nile cruise. Mm. Uh, so I'll be teaching more on the cruise when, when, when we have the off time and be doing a group past life regression and even a channeling session. Oh, that's fabulous. And, and is that on your website or is there a specific website? Uh, that? that isn't on the website yet. The date is wrong on it because my son is making a new website and okay. delayed a couple of weeks. But on Facebook... Um, on my Facebook page, you will see it mm-hmm. uh, under my name. And if you go to the website called timeofanewera.com. Okay, excellent. That's where it is and the uh, video and all the information and the itinerary, you know, everything that, that it is. And, of course, anybody can even email me if they want any of the information, too. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Now, I was going to, I understand these days now, due to the politics involved, tourists are, I've heard, tourists are prevented from chanting or praying in these pyramids. I'm not sure if that's true or not. I was wondering. I haven't heard that. Okay. All right. Yeah. Just let us know, I mean, how your experience is. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll you know, I keep in contact uh, with the person who's the organizer. It's actually a um, international company. Mm-hmm. He's from Poland, and they actually did the... Um, the video, the documentary on the Sphinx and the mm. redating of it. Nice. So, and he's in contact with his contacts in Egypt all the time. So if there was anything like that, I'd be hearing about it. Okay, good. I think there's a lot of rumors mm-hmm. in what's going on. Right. Uh, from what I hear and what the press shows doesn't necessarily mean it's in the tourist area. Mm-hmm. You know, people get scared, but so far it's not in that area. And I don't think it will, because that's their bread and butter. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, that's true. They're that, a lot. That will, and I mean, as it is because of the, the, the fighting, it's hurt tourism. So if they mm-hmm. do anything, it, it, that, that the country will be gone. Right. Because they, they depend on that tourism for mm-hmm. their main source of money. I agree. Yeah. So this is, this is actually your first time. Have you ever been to the pyramids, on, at least on this mm-hmm. timeline? Or? I've never been. <laughs> And uh, it's kind of interesting because I was told years back, and I found this out in 1996, there was a messenger that came into my life, a spiritual messenger. I did not know whether she was raised from the dead. I called her zombie lady. <laughs> or she was an ET. Very, I've had some very unusual experiences. So I learned a lot about what was supposed to happen in the future and what I was supposed to be doing. And one of the key things is that she told me I would know it's close to what I was told was going to happen when I went to Egypt. Hmm. And I was supposed to pay attention to when I had that strong urge to go to Egypt. And I had started to get some kind of a sense about it. Mm-hmm. And then this came out of the blue. Wow. So I know it's time. And the, the, the tour date was changed three times. Hmm. So I know the other side it was changing it. 
Mm-hmm. And then I had to write eight to ten articles on Egypt that went into all these um, spiritual magazines. Wow. So that was so I got to know Egypt before I made that adjustment. Exactly. Well, you know, plus other multiple lifetimes, I'm sure, you know. Oh, you know. yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> And, of course, you're going to have an Egyptian tour guide. The, the tour guide is going to be telling you about the particular place we're at. I'm doing the spiritual work. Mm-hmm. And there's also something that, this is an interesting story. I have the two crystal skulls, which will be there. Mm-hmm. But another messenger in 1996 confirmed what that other messenger said, and only she gave me a six-page um, message. Hmm. And in that, I was supposed to receive an amethyst skull about the size of Maya, hmm. and that I could not buy it, it would be given to me. And that when I had this, then I had to go to all the sacred sites, and I had to form the triangle with the three. Hmm. And that was a way of releasing energy or some kind of a code that opened up the energy. Mm-hmm. Now... To me, I'm saying, now, really, is somebody going to give me an amethyst skull? Well, <laughs> on the cruise, on the, the, this last crystal skull conference, I happened to be talking about Egypt, and I mentioned this message, and it was the other guardian, uh, Sherry, who said, an amethyst skull? And I said, yes. So she began to tell me the story of this couple who had this amethyst skull, who took it all over the world. But the couple broke up, and the one man who originally owned it didn't want it anymore. And he Hmm. gave it to her and said, you find the next owner for it. Wow. So she promptly put it in the mail to me. That's So I have the third skull. Oh, that's awesome. So it's like wild. (laughs) Yeah, confirmation. It's amazing how the universe works. Oh, yes, yes. It's like, oh, my God. So, um... Literally. I have that third skull now. That's awesome. Oh, wow. This is fabulous. I've got to ask you, do you do um, dowsing with dowsing rods also or no? Well, I've used them. Okay. Um, yes, I've used them. Okay. I actually will use them and I'm teaching courses to mm-hmm. show people the power of their thoughts mm-hmm. by doing a demonstration with the dowsing rods. Oh, that's excellent. Uh, I know that some of the ghost hunters are starting to use them now in haunted places. Mm-hmm. which you can, which, you know, certainly you can uh, use them for that. Hmm. So I guess when I began, I might have used them, but my stomach started right away. So. Yeah, so you don't use any equipment. You just <laughs> no. have your own body. That's the way to yeah. go, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think they, they do it easy nowadays. They go in with all the little equipment and this and that. and Oh, you, know, you know, they can pick up on anything with that. Mm-hmm. But I think it's great no. that you, yeah, a natural. Exactly. Yeah, that's excellent. So, so the tools you use to read your clients is basically just you and, and me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's fabulous. Yeah. And I'll receive it, and I I won't give it to them right away. I write everything down mm-hmm. because I don't want to um, lose that train of thought. As once you're tapped in and you're getting images, mm-hmm. so that I'm just writing it all down before I say a word. Mm-hmm. Then I'll inter- I'll give it to an interpreter. Nice. So form. they don't actually ask you questions. You actually just start running the energy. I start, yeah, and then once I've done that, I give it to interpret it, then they can ask their questions. Nice. It's a great but way to First, it's all what, what spirit is, you know, giving me for them, mm-hmm. for their guidance. Nice. That's very good. And what is your vision? I don't know if you really want to relay this or not, but do you have a vision of the future in America for, the, like, maybe a little mini forecast for the next <laughs> few months? Yeah. You know, <laughs> anything positive? <laughs> so, uh, well, that's going to be interesting. <laughs> no, I, I'm not going to be negative because I, I still feel it's going to be positive. And you know, I felt last year at this time that as far as the finance, you know, we would start to see some recovery. Mm-hmm. I don't, and I think that there is some here, at least on the East Coast, mm-hmm. uh, at least in housing. There seems to be more houses being sold. There's, there's there's an upbeat. I know they're talking all about the dollar collapsing and things like that. I don't believe that that's going to happen. Mm-hmm. I think we'll be fine there. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, there are things going on that you have to wonder about. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say this. I do believe we're going to have the ETs here. You do? Okay. That's good to yes. know. That's what's coming. And they're not bad. They're, they're coming to help us. And ETs are not 
what we think they are. It's really a higher, I guess it's better to call them ultra-terrestrials mm-hmm. because they're, they're a high spiritual being, and we are going to ultimately know the truth of everything, mm-hmm. and that uh, we'll know really what God is, uh, when all of this happened. And if, God forbid, there were a nuclear attack, the uh, ETs would be here sooner than later mm-hmm. because they have the capabilities of neutralizing nuclear energy. Right. Yeah, I think what I'm noticing lately, too, is with the, the Earth changes, you know, with all these sinkholes and things like that that are happening with the Earth, it's really making some huge transitions. So um, do you read anything into that at all, or do you think they're all connected? I, I think it's... It's, yes, there are transitions that are going to go on. Uh, I think we're going to have some loss of life that's going to go on. Mm-hmm. There's something with, you know, earthquakes and things like this, but not to the devastation that you would think. Mm-hmm. I think it's designed to make us afraid. Right. In order to prepare us for what's coming. Because what I've been told is that it's not just going to be the ETs. We will have God's presence on the earth in our lifetime, whatever God is. Mm -hmm. So, and and what was told to me, that all the the biblical text and other sacred texts have to be played out, Mm -hmm. parts of it, in order to prepare the people for what's coming and to make us afraid to want, in essence, to be saved. Mm -hmm. So do they literally have to shed the fear, though, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, but we're going to have to go through that fear mm-hmm. to want something, right? Yeah. And because we're not we're not emotionally equipped to handle ETs, mm-hmm. whatever they are, it's going to be different. That's also why there's been a more of an opening up of psychic ability. I mean, I'm in the field probably close to 30 years now from when I began, mm-hmm. so. You know, there at 30 years ago, this was still in the closet. You couldn't even read a book in front of anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's opened up more and more, and people are opening their ability. And there's a reason for it because when in they come, what do you think is going to happen? Is that our method of communication is going to be telepathy? Mm-hmm. They're going to psychically be speaking to us. Right. So the more people that have opened up this ability, the better, because they will then be able to help those that have no knowledge of this and could be frightened. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's part of what I know that's going to happen. It makes perfect sense, actually. They're getting calibrated. Yeah. Makes perfect sense to me, anyway. Um, Mm -hmm. Do you work with animal spirits and read um, for your clients the energy of pets? They've come in in seances. I've done that, but I haven't actually, you know, like if they ask me a question about it, I'll do it. Mm-hmm. But I, I, it's not a focus where I'll go into uh, animal communication. Okay. Uh, like some psychics will, uh, psychics will, uh, you know, focus on that and it'll become their specialty. But there are times it will come through, and they do come through in, in seances. Okay. I've had that a lot. There's a question in the chat room for you. I think it's from Vibes, but... Um can the guest explain how she learned the communication, or is it through a mind thought? Mind thought. Does that make sense? Um, it is through the mind, but the, the best way that I can describe it in order, the, the biggest question is how do you tell what's your thought and what is actual communication? Mm-hmm. The only way that you can tell is that you want, first of all, you have to ask your questions, you know, is this something I'm afraid of? Is this something that relates to my life? But the biggest thing is the self-confidence, self-love, and trust in yourself. Mm -hmm. Because once you do that, you begin to very quickly delineate what is your thoughts as opposed to what is spirit communicating. Mm -hmm. And through trial and error in the beginning, you'll make a few errors. But that's okay, because the more you trust, the more it comes and the greater clarity it comes with. Mm-hmm. I agree. So that's the best way that I can, you know, tell a person, you know, don't be afraid, just do it. Mm-hmm. And then it will prove itself out to you. And then you'll soon be able to tell the difference very easily. 
Yeah, repetition too. Um, you, you do think society in general is fairly accepting of psychics these days? I know it's true that you know they used to kind of—I don't say they really frowned on psychics, but yeah, that was. Oh, they did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they did. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate, isn't it? But you think they're coming up to uh, you know getting a little more enlightened about it, or? Oh, absolutely, okay. absolutely. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can tell by the clientele I've had over the years. Uh, even in seances, I mean, I've had um, I've had a nun come to a seance. I've had uh, police officers. I've had um, IRS agents. I've had accountants. I've had medical doctors. Wow. So when you start getting people, and I've had them for clients to come in for reading, when you start getting people like that, you get to see uh, how it's changed and that more and more people are embracing it. That's wonderful. And beginning to believe in it. So uh, it, it's a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. And if anybody studies entrepreneur, uh, people, successful people in business, some of your old, you know, uh, inventors, you will see that they actually had intuition. It mm -hmm. came to them in an intuitive flash. Mm -hmm. Even Einstein in, yeah. in his theory of relativity. Mm -hmm. There is a dream that he had that uh, is how he figured it out. Mm -hmm. So it's it's becoming so much more acceptable in, in every level. Mm -hmm. So I think it's wonderful. I do too, yeah. The more, the more we push that, the better it's going to be for a lot of people. Okay, the way I look at it is this. In opening up my own ability and, and understanding it and, 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 and from every angle, I feel that it's something we all have the seeds for. God gave it to all of us because it was the tool we were to use in order to receive the guidance for a better life. Mm -hmm. How many of us, you know, pray to a higher power, and we ask for the guidance, but we don't pay attention? Mm -hmm. And you could be receiving it through an intuitive ash or some other psychic way and not realize it. So the more you open this up, you recognize it, you will also recognize the guidance that's coming in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I think it's very valuable for that reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, leads to more enlightenment and more peace of mind for everybody in the long run. Mm -hmm. I mean, most of, I see a lot of people in survival mode right now. You know, everybody just wants to live and survive and make money, and you have to kind of transcend that with your higher self, over so at least from my perspective, from what I've been picking up. Yes, you do. And the most important thing, though, is that you have to stay positive. Yeah. Absolutely. Everything that's going on out there, it's, a lot of it's designed for fear. Mm -hmm. And we're all feeling it. There's no question about it. But it's mm -hmm. also an attack of the dark force. Right. It's the dark force's last hurrah. Mm -hmm. So fear is the wedge between you and God. Mm -hmm. So if you can, and I mean, it's very, very difficult not to have fear. But the way I teach people, if you have fear, you ultimately will get control of what you're fearing. And the best thing you can do is to negate it with seeing in a vision the exact opposite of what you were fearing. Mm -hmm. So you don't leave that thought form out there. Right. Because you could bring it to you what you fear. Yeah, it's Velcro. Yeah. Right. It can be. <laughs> yes. Makes perfect so it's sense. very, very important. And I think the more we're positive and the more we visualize what's good about life, we're also helping to create it. Mm -hmm. I agree with and that. And so we have that ability to balance the earth right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's easy so. to get wrapped up in the drama. I'm, I'm, I have to oh. say I'm guilty on Facebook for doing <laughs> I get all worked <laughs> up sometimes. I mean, it's, it's not fear with me, though. It's more like just I get angry. I get annoyed, and I have to move that yeah. energy. But, um, yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you about um, the poltergeist. Have you have you been around poltergeists before in haunted haunted houses or? Yeah, sure. You have mm -hmm. okay. So you've actually seen those kind of. You don't consider it to be a type of anomaly with a magnetic field or anything. It's actually a real poltergeist. Well, there's there's two schools of thought. Uh, one school of thought is that it is not a spirit. Mm -hmm. That it is actually a thought form that has. Uh, been released and is causing the activity and it's involving emotions. The other school of thought is that it's a spirit but thought form of the people in, in you know, uh, living with it mm -hmm. will cause more of the activity. And I'll give you an example of it. 
uh, a case that uh, I had known about. I didn't do about this one. I had done another one. But there was this person who moved into a this couple moved into a house, and they couldn't understand it because what would happen is they would go into this one bedroom, and shoes would come flying out of them, various things like this. So it was a poltergeist activity. Mm-hmm. What they found out is the people who owned the house before them, their son was killed. Huh. And as they kept the log of the activity, it turned out to be that the activity was on all the major holidays. It was on the child's birthday. It was the parents' birthdays, things like this. Huh. So it was directly related to the mourning of the people who lived there before them. Wow. So once that mourning process ended and they got you know, uh, acclimated with the situation, the activity also stopped. Huh. In a case that I did, uh, I went in this one case, and it's like a duplex home, so there's, you know, two two families living one side. And I knew nothing about the house. I was taken in with a researcher. And as I went through the house... Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Raven Stars. We are. Just want to let everyone know, if you want to call in, the number is 347 347- Six eight eight two nine zero two. We're here um, tonight with Jane Doherty, a psychic. And it looks like Jane. It looks like we have a, a phone call here. Um, would you like to take okay. a call? Okay. Uh, sure. Six five zero. Go ahead. You're on. Hey, how are you doing? Good. How are you? I'm not bad. I was listening. Uh, um, I have uh, just two, just two questions. Okay. Um, well, that was a kid. This I never could ever explain. Okay. When I was a kid, I uh, I went to school one day and I had the most uh, weird experience. <laughs> I felt like I uh, never had um, a feeling ever. And the only thing that saved me from feeling, just having feelings, um, was... Um, I guess my faith. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. I um, I was at a uh, prior to that. I was at a, a friend's house. It was my friend's house, and they were doing like like Ouija board stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, I'm like, yeah, I don't need that crap. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, eh, I'm not into that. <laughs> I was way in the back in the background. You know what I mean? way over there in the background and for some reason they expected me I went home I three days later I, my god my my whole I mean when I went when I went to school my whole mind was altered I mean my there I felt like it was, they were trying to I don't know what it was possess you I was scared I was really scared nobody could ever tell me my, my my parents said, Oh yeah, it's anxiety. <laughs> Screw that. You know, I was really fucked I mean screwed up. Sure. Screwed sure. up. And You're um, probably trying to possess you at that point. You had a partial yes, man. possession. Thank God somebody can hear that. I I didn't feel I mean I Man, you know, it, it just, it feels to this day, it's still you there. Get, it's still frightened there. about it. Yeah. Huh? You still get frightened about it. Yeah. I, I never, I never really, I, I fell asleep for three days. And I felt, and I woke up and I went, <gasps> and everybody said, oh, he's fine. <laughs> it's like, listen, you fell I look back at it. You fell asleep uh-huh. for three days? Three right? days. I, I was sleeping for three days, and everybody, everybody went, damn, Steve, you woke up, and, 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 and it was nothing to them. My, my, my dad, of course, he was, he's what he is, but, uh, yeah. How old were I you mean, now? How old uh, were you 17. Time? I was 17 years old. Hmm. I was in a, uh, I, 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 
who was in a, um, I knew a, in a house that was very haunted. Um, it sounds like... I, I, I'm haunted. very sensitive to beings. I'm very sensitive to spirits. I'm very sensitive to that. Okay, so Jane, go ahead. No, what I'm saying is that I feel as though he was partially possessed, and because he slept for three mm-hmm. days, his body, his soul was probably not there. It was traveling out of his body, and that spirit was maybe trying to get into his body to fully possess him, uh, that kind of a thing. And I think I heard him say that it was his faith that he felt saved him. And well, let me, tell you, let me tell you something. I'll, t- mm-hmm. I'll tell you one thing right now. When I went to school that day, I had the most dead feeling ever in my life. It was called, I don't care. I don't care. I could take a gun and and, and, and blow somebody's head off and don't even mm-hmm. give a shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's how I felt. And that's what, what was scaring me. And the only thing that saved me was the... I kept saying to myself, this isn't me, this isn't me, this isn't me, this isn't me, this isn't me. Isn't me. I don't know what happened to me after that. Well, that was stupid. smart that you did that <laughs> because you might not be here today because it, it the, the spirit was possessing you. And so you're super sensitive to spirits. And very, I don't know if, if you had a drink or not, but... When drink is involved, it changes the auric field around you, around anyone. And that's when all the studies have shown that that's when possession can take place because the auric field actually becomes porous and then a spirit could attach inside that opening of the the field. So now even though you weren't working the Ouija board, you are sensitive to spirit energy, so it jumped to you and partially possessed you, is what happened. So you, you're, you're telling me, uh, <laughs> that day, see, this is the main thing for me. I mean, that day, I went back to my house, and for three days, <laughs> three days, I was whacked out. Yeah. Whacked. Yeah. <laughs> and all, all my, <laughs> anybody can say is like I was, Oh, you just got anxiety. <laughs> I was like, "What?" No, I no, it, my it, mind, it was, my it was, mind, well, my mind was like, I had, I, I got out of school because I was thinking I wanted to kill people. Mhm, mhm. It was probably and a was dark, like, dark entity is what um, possessed you at wow. that point. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but fortunately. It, it left you. You didn't give in to it. Um, no, I, you, no I, you, you kept saying this wasn't you, and, and you were maintaining no, your no, space. No. Had you not yeah. done that, that could have fully possessed you. But you were doing yeah. something to maintain your own space and, and your own power. And that's the yeah. most important thing for anybody to realize, that nobody can overtake you unless you allow it. So no matter what happens, if you're strong and refuse to allow it, it will happen. It will go away. It will leave you alone. See, that's so the one thing. You that on your own, which is good. I, yeah. And, whoops, hold on. I think we lost him. <laughs> Sorry. Thank, well, thanks for calling wherever you are. Um, I think I lost him in the airwaves. But, yeah, I agree okay. with that 100%, Jane. Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. It makes perfect sense. And uh, I don't, I don't play with the Ouija board. I'm not real fond of Ouija boards myself. Um, just never got into those. What's your take on those? I mean, obviously. Well, actually, you want to know? Yeah. I started doing my ghost first ghost investigation was with the Ouija board. Really? Yep. Wow. Mm-hmm. The traditional Ouija. The traditional Ouija board, but um, I learned that you know that is the question that people will ask me when I'm lecturing. And I won't tell them, don't do it. I teach them how to do it properly. Mm -hmm. Because when you say don't, they will. Right. That type of thing. What I found back then is that it depends upon who you do the Ouija board with. Mm -hmm. If you do the Ouija board with someone who could be negative or filled with fear, 
um, then you can attract the bad spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, if you, you know, you, you're doing with someone who's of like mind and, and light, you'll be okay. But the key is that when you're using it, you always ask if it comes from the light. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't do that, if it keeps going to the dark, you keep telling it to leave, that you want only someone from the light. Mm -hmm. And you may have to do it ten times. But ultimately, it will leave, and you feel the energy of it change. Now, where people go wrong is this, is all of a sudden they'll get something in there that's, that's negative and saying bad things. They'll get frightened, and they'll let go, mm -hmm. and they'll just put the board away. They have not banished the spirit. Mm -hmm. They have not uh, gained control. In other words, they allow the spirit to have to control, mm -hmm. and the spirit could stay there. So it's always important to banish whatever spirit has come that is not good. Okay, what's a good way to banish? Um, just, you know, something... It, the only thing I've ever done was tell it to leave. Okay. And say it with strength. Mm -hmm. Like you're commanding it. You don't want it there. I only want someone of the light. And it's, it's, you're commanding it. And you may have to say it ten times. Mm -hmm. But you will, the energy of the board will change and you will have something light and it'll go, you know, to proper answer. Mm -hmm. So that's important. Your own strength is mm -hmm. what's important. I think that makes perfect sense, actually. I have a talking board with me for my birthday, but it's not a traditional Ouija board. It's actually it's a circular, like a clock. And it has, mm -hmm. all, it's pretty interesting, actually, the way it runs. But, yeah, I haven't really played with that much. But, yeah, you know, these days I'll do it, I guess. <laughs> but the <laughs> traditional ones, yeah, I remember those when I was a kid. And, you know, my mother used to get angry with us because we would spend hours in the room. And she, that thing would go all over the place. And I swear we weren't pushing it. But my mother no. finally got so mad, she threw it in the fireplace and burned it. And it wouldn't burn. <laughs> and that was the story of the, the Ouija board in my house. <laughs> But, you know, it put us in this space of, I don't want to say we're we're in hypnosis, but, yeah, it really does put you in an altered space of consciousness on some level, um, I would say, anyway. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it can, you know, and the Ouija board is no different in somebody becoming obsessed with it, mm -hmm. like automatic writing or capturing EVPs. Right. Uh, those two things also could have an obsessive component to it, and somebody can get caught up in it where they're just automatic writing all day long and, and every day, and before you know it, they're they're obsessed with it. Or there's a case of a girl who uh, just started to get EVPs and then get EVPs in her house, and then she closed herself off and wouldn't be with friends, and she's just becoming obsessed with getting spirit voices. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's, it's, yeah. it's the same as a, as a Ouija board. The mm -hmm. same thing can happen. That makes perfect sense to me. Do you see a lot of ghost hunters actually getting um, more obsessed with with finding a contact when they go scan houses, or do you ever notice that? No, I think I think for the most part, you know, most of them are pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that you do you can just get caught up in it right. because it gets exciting. You know, it gets you get curious, so you want more and you want more and you want more, mm -hmm. and then um, that's all you want to do. So anything that you Oh, it's all you want to do can become an obsessive, you know, aspect. Right, almost like an addiction. Um, mm -hmm. You have another mm -hmm. call here, six five zero. Sure. Uh, is there? Oh, it's me again. I'm sorry. Okay, listen, I can't have you hang on the line for like you can you can ask another quick question, but I'm I'm going to have to you know can't can't stick around. For well, I, I I just I just want to know about the experience that I had. Well, I think Jane um, covered that with you, and so far as Jane, you want to just give him a quick. Um, Rundown. Yeah, no, the experience you had was one of possession, and it was probably something that was a dark entity, and had you not uh, been strong and, ha and, and get yourself into your space, you would have been fully possessed, but you took care of it, and that's, you know, what it was. Mm -hmm. You're just sensitive to spirits. You need to close your aura uh, up when you're around certain circumstances so that you don't attract anything more to you. Mm -hmm. All right, thank but you. But you have the control. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for calling in. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. I was going to ask you, you work with law enforcement also, right? Yes, I've worked with law enforcement. Okay. Um, have you, um, I mean, how, how does that go? I mean, do, are they pretty accepting of psychics these days? I know they were kind of skeptical for a while. Uh, I think they're still skeptical. 
but they will work with a psychic. And they've been working with psychics for years. Mm -hmm. They just won't say it. And Mm -hmm. it's like when they have no other recourse and they don't have any more clues, they'll call a psychic in in order to help with clues, send them in another trail or, or pick up some things that they may be also thinking, and then therefore they know how to go. Right. And, and how is your success rate with that? I, I imagine you do fairly, fairly well in targeting. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, I've worked on a few cases, and they turned out to be, you know, very, very well. You don't. It, police cases are tough because you don't really want to speak about them. Mm-hmm. Because if you're working on a murder case, mm-hmm. then you, the murderer can find out, <laughs> then you could be the next target. Right. So it's a, it's a delicate thing. Mm-hmm. It's a delicate thing. Yeah. That's what it is. Sounds like it, my goodness. Um, so, and so far as empowering your clients go, we, we already know you're going to be offering your classes for that. And your website is janedoherty.com. Mm-hmm. Okay, so just in case anybody wants to contact you, and they can also get you through Facebook. And yes. if they wanted to do a session with you, is, do you have a phone number you give out, or is it just through your website? Um, they could email me, and then, yeah, th- then I would give them the phone number to call. Okay. But usually I'll set up appointments through email. Mm-hmm. And, yes, I do phone readings, okay. so I, I, I do them all over. Excellent. Okay. And um, you are the author of Awakening the Mystic Gifts, available on Amazon.com. And I was wondering if you have any plans in the future to write another book. Oh, definitely. Okay. Uh, I think the next one that I want to write is has to do with the Crystal Skulls because nice. of the experiences I've had with them and, you know, that, and then also to do a workbook on how to work with crystal skulls and, and also in, in, in uh, you know, creating higher consciousness with them, developing psychic ability with them. Mm-hmm. Excellent. All that. So I'll be working on those two pretty soon. And then the other one I want to do is on the spirit world. Okay. So I have a couple of major projects. I nice. So I'm looking forward to reading those. And it looks like we have a caller here at, well, it's Joe Tones. Hey, Joe. Hi, Solaris. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. I just first uh, first off, I just wanted to call and uh, just let you know what a what a pleasant and wonderful experience it is having you here on Revolution Radio and uh, how many people actually look forward to your show. Well, thank uh, you. Saturday at midnight, and you're doing such a fantastic job. I mean, extremely professional all the way, uh, all the way through. And I just wanted to say uh, say that and get that out of the way. Well, thank you. Uh, if you can just do it on a favor again and just announce your your guest's name and her site, if she had one, and uh, yeah, and to the guest, I know you, you know, you, you have these incredible readings and these feelings. Uh, can you can you give a can you give a good reading right now, not on just the individual, but on humanity in general? Can you can you give some hope or or some fear for the people? Hopefully, more on the hope side and the creation side than the these you know, destructive side uh, for the individuals out there. Uh, oh, absolutely. Of, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do, do that if, if you if you wouldn't mind. I'm going to take this off the air. So, But Solaris, honestly, you're doing an incredible job here, and we thank you for all that you do, and uh, keep up the great work. Well, thank okay. you. Thank you, Toad. Yeah. Appreciate thank it. You, Thanks again. And uh, please, you know, by all means, say say your sights again if you, if you could. That's right. Uh, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Joe. All right, Jane. Yes. All right. So let's let's run by um, the website one more time. Okay. It's Jane Doherty, uh, J A N E D O H E R T Y uh, dot com is the website. You can find me on Facebook under my name, and there's also a page called Psychic Meeting Jane Doherty, so you'd be able to find me. And the email address is my name again, Jane. Doherty, D-O-H-E-R-T-Y, at comcast.net. Very good. Excellent. And I think he wanted me to say something about the future Mm -hmm. for humanity. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm very positive about it, so that's how I view it, and I think some of the things that I said before, that we will have God's presence on the earth, and that we will have, from that point on, a thousand years of peace, love. There will be money for people. It won't be the way it is now. You'll have uh, total light.
the most important thing right now is to stay positive, no matter how much what's coming out at you, is to stay positive and to visualize the exact opposite of the bad. It's also the way I've learned, you know, following people's lives over the years and doing readings for them over the years, you get to see that how we get stuck in what we think is destiny and we'll have a bad run of things and then we lose our hope. And when we lose our hope, we say stuck. Uh, so no matter what you're going through is try to find that glimmer of hope and project the future opposite of the bad that you're going through because eventually what happens is you get to that future you're seeing and that is the way to get out of the bad uh you know we've got a lot going on out there now but i do see hope for you and i and i i know it because i'm in the field so long i see how it's changed and how more and more people are embracing the light and you're just going through seeing that you're getting a division of powers going on. You're beginning to see the dark and the light. But there is a lot more light than there is dark. And that's what's changing the world and is saving the world because there's enough people in the light to tip the fulcrum in, in, into the light and not into the dark. Mm -hmm. So the future is bright despite what you see out there. And what you're hearing. Yeah, I agree with that too. We are going through some dark times right now. Yeah, it is about consciousness and staying positive. There's no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. and, and manifesting at will, we all know how we create our own realities by thought. So it makes perfect sense to me. And so far as just staying positive and, you know, not to get into my own personal experiences in life, but I have gone through the dark side in so far as, you know, some dark tides. And I've always rewritten everything into a positive, which actually allowed me to survive a lot of the things I've been through. So I agree with you 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. I've actually stopped listening to the news. I never thought that I would do that. Oh, mainstream news. <laughs> yes, because I've been, you know, like a news junkie. You know, yeah. you want to know what's going on. And I have for the past six months is blocking it out because mm -hmm. I find that it's eroding the positiveness that I'm projecting. I totally agree. It's like, and I go, I don't want, I don't want to deal with this anymore. It's what I'm going to stay and do what I need to do and project mm -hmm. positive for the future. I agree with that. Because yeah. It, it's just creating fear in people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's like awful. Water. I agree. Yeah. It's very toxic. To me, I find it to be very toxic. And actually, yeah. I get my news on Facebook, believe it or not. I get more information from people on Facebook than I would in, in the news any day. Yeah, I do too. You know, <laughs> none of it's censored, you know. Most of it, because so, right. I need good files and send them to me. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, I agree with yeah. that. Yeah, if we could just unplug from the false realities and all this um, negative stimulation, I think we'd be better as a society for sure. I think so too. Yeah, but I agree with you. I, I believe in staying positive and staying optimistic about everything that we're going through right now. For That's the most important thing, and I've seen that just on individual people and following their lives, that it's very interesting if you pay attention to your words and what you're saying, uh -huh. because you're programming yourself. This one particular example, uh, and it just stuck me right in the face when I was dealing with this woman and I was doing a reading, but we were chit-chatting, you think, after, I don't know what it was. And she was saying that how all these bad things, she was telling me a story of all these bad things that happened to her from, you know, flood in the house to all kinds of crazy things. And each time she would say, okay, God, I can handle this. What's next? And she would repeat this every time. And I looked at her, I said, look what you're saying. You're actually saying to God, you can handle this and you want more. Mm -hmm. and, she, and she looked at me and she goes, oh, my God. I said, that's your, your key. You have to not look at it as, okay, something else bad is going to happen or what next is going to happen. You need to look and see that everything is going to go positive. Mm -hmm. Now, this messenger that came in my life um, that I called zombie lady, <laughs> uh, <laughs> she taught me how affirmations are very important. It isn't enough to pray. It isn't enough to just put it out there either. You must affirm it. Mm -hmm. You must affirm it's going to happen. And that's how prayers get answered. That's how you create. Because just sending it out there, sometimes it won't make it. Mm -hmm. But if I you agree. affirm it, it will. Sort of like gives it the energy for it to get to where it needs to get. Mm -hmm. 
exactly. You're such a blessing, Jane. I have to tell you, I, I've been enjoying oh, talking to you, and it's like um, old soul, I swear. But I hope everyone appreciates you as much as I do. I know they do. It's just, you know, I want to hear more of you. There's no doubt about it. And so far as um, hopefully, you know, we have plenty of time left. I, I would like you to come back for sure on sure. the show because you're just incredible and very uplifting. And people need to hear that. I mean, yeah, um, they, do. they get really pessimistic and cynical. And I mean, and it's really important that, that you're around, you know, to kind of shift that, that false energy. It false is life. so important because we're creating it. And that's, what people don't understand is that the more people that are staying positive, projecting the positive, we're creating the future. Mm-hmm. We can stop any of the bad that's going on because mm-hmm. there's enough people that are projecting that positive energy mm-hmm. and thoughts. I agree. So it, it, it's it's been my goal since I was a kid. I've always seen things in the positive and, and mm-hmm. I've seen how it works. So, and then I've only learned being psychic, uh, following people's lives, how important it is. Mm-hmm. You know, you see the pattern, so, and then, you know, you know some of the futures, so you know how important it is to be positive. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I was just going to ask you, what, what's your zodiac sign? I was just curious. I'm a Libra. Are you really? Oh, okay, mm-hmm. cool. Yeah, I was, I'm a 29 degree Aries. I was just curious. You can tell I'm an Aries. <laughs> no. I'm a Libra, and I have a Gemini moon. Yeah, okay, and, great. Oh. And a Taurus rising. Oh, wow. So I'm like the full Venus, and the Gemini supposedly is what gives me psychic ability in the way it is in my chart. It was told to me years ago. This is a communicator, too. Yeah. And I used to think it was the Libra that uh, made me the communicator, and then I realized it's the Gemini, because oh. I... My major in college was uh, speech and theater art, so public mm-hmm. speaking. Nice. And it, I never taught a day of my major. I taught high school English. Mm-hmm. It's my minor. But I think the public speaking prepared me for today, for the mm-hmm. things I do today. Isn't it amazing how that's just a stepping stone yes. to another level? Yes. Yeah, we don't realize what we do in the past affects us now, but it surely does. And wishes do come true. And I'll tell you this story. When I was in college... I was very fascinated with stage makeup because, you know, we would do the plays and I would be in charge of the stage makeup and I would create the characters, you know, with makeup mm-hmm. and we do it. So I made a wish and I wish that someday I could play a char- an old character in a movie. Now, this is when I was 18, 19, I guess. Well, in 2009, I am cast in a movie. Wow. Playing an old character, a, a grandmother, in a supernatural thriller. Nice. And I'm, like, driving to this place that I have to be studying lines after 18 uh, ghost stores that I had done that weekend. And I'm saying, how in the world did this come about? I didn't try out for this. This is, like, it's over. And then I thought about that wish I had made. Hmm. So it may have taken many years, but it did come about. Right. Be careful what you wish for. Is what you have say. to be careful what you wish for. <laughs> and this this movie will be finally coming out. It's taken this long, but I'm waiting to hear the exact release date. But yeah. I've spoken to the uh, the the financial backer, the company, mm-hmm. and he said it's been um, the contract has been sold with major distributor in L.A. and they're working on the release date for somewhere in the next couple of months. Nice. And what's the name of this film again? It, the name of it is Amy. She can see the possessed. Nice. I play. It's all in Amish country. It's it's. Um, we're all in Amish clothing. Oh wow! And uh, I play the grandmother, and she's my granddaughter who can see the possessed. Wow! And uh, the exorcist is Chris Atkins, mm-hmm. Christopher Atkins, who played opposite Brooke Shields. Oh okay. In the movie Blue Lagoon. Mm-hmm. So, um, and so it's finally going to come out. I can't wait. Yeah, <laughs> let us know so we can plug it's it a, for it's you. It's a cool movie, and and the special effects are going to be awesome. So Amish possession, right? <laughs> yes, that's yes. Right. <laughs> well, it's because and it's very believable mm-hmm. because the Amish are very superstitious, right? Yes. So it, it's very believable because of that. The way it's mm-hmm. set in in Amish in you know country. Wow. It's, it's it's different. It was very different. Yeah, it sounds good. Well, definitely let us know when it goes live. So we I can will. Check it out and everybody can check it out. 
Um, what do you feel is the biggest power spot on the globe right now? I mean, I know the pyramids are very powerful. Uh, what was your take on the big power spot? Is that what you're attracted I would, to? I would think it is the pyramid, the Great Pyramid. Yeah. Uh, I would think that. I would think that um, the in Mexico City, apparent. I don't. I don't know the name of that particular pyramid. Um, I know it's the pyramid of the sun and the moon. It's mm-hmm. T O something or other, and I can never say it. Mm-hmm. But those pyramids are aligned to the pyramids in Egypt, and they're both aligned to the Orion um, star system. Right. And they're very powerful, both spots. Now, in June, I'm going to the one in Mexico. Mm. I'm going uh, actually with the person who um, did the Crystal Skull Conferences. He has a a group going that he's advertising Oracle Stone Productions to go to uh, Mexico City for these ruins. So that's the first place I'll be putting the pyramids, Mm. the um, Crystal Skulls in pyramid shape. But those... Are, are the two, I think, um, most powerful sacred points mm-hmm. right now. Yeah, I tend to agree with that. I do. I do think that a lot of that turmoil that's going on in Egypt right now is, I think that it amplifies, or actually the, the pyramids amplify the energetic around there, and it, it seems to amplify the negativity. That's my mm-hmm. own take on it. But, um, I, you know, it just seems that way, that it's just, you know, accelerating and it, amplifying the energetic, whether it's positive or negative, which, you know, would indicate why there's so much chaos over there and strange activity. But I, I have to agree with you. you. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, well, safe travels when you go in September. Sounds sounds pretty fascinating. But you, have you had encounters with extraterrestrials or <laughs> UFO sightings or just... Yes. You have. Yes, I <laughs> <Like> have. <that. laughs> of course you have. Yes, I have. It's probably the last thing that I've embraced to speak about, uh-huh. yet uh, at the Crystal Skull Conference is the past two years I revealed it. It seems to be once I got the Crystal Skulls in my possession, six months later, I had an abduction. Wow. And it was after that abduction that my stomach started to go out. Hmm. And it was after that that I was forced to do psychic readings. Before that, I just just wanted to, to develop it to prove the personal research project. Mm-hmm. And um, what happened, I was teaching a course on stress management at the adult school, and I left and I turned on a street that would take me right into my hometown. And I woke up trance-like 40 minutes later, driving, coming out of a trance, having I, no idea where I was. And I learned I would have had to make eight turns to be on that street that I found myself on. Mm. Uh, I came in the house practically stumbling and saying to my son I had a strange experience, but he figured it was a ghost experience. And I was so tired, I went to bed. I had no idea that I had talked to somebody on the phone. The next night, I returned the call to that person and told him, I'm sorry, not calling you back. And he said, what do you mean? He said, you talked to me for two hours. No recollection whatsoever. Hmm. Uh, that I found myself going to a UFO conference, and that's when I learned the elements of an abduction. Mm-hmm. And then what happened is uh, I was president of the Jersey Society of Parapsychology at the time, and one of the members was a psychiatrist, and she insisted that I had to be regressed to find out what had happened, and, and she insisted that it would be audio taped and videotaped, and I'm so glad she did Wow. And uh, I went through the regression and saw exactly what had happened to me. Hmm. And there was a short gray, a tall gray. There was a lot more tall ones than short ones. I was put on a table. I was strapped in. A helmet-like apparatus was put on my head. Hmm. And at first I got frightened because I saw a man tied up in a corner. And uh, I didn't know what that was about. And then they calmed me with their eyes. Hmm. And they telepathically talked to me that, that everything was going to be fine. And what they did was they put energy into me, is what they said. And it was more or less the way that my energy then would affect other energy, other people's energy in a positive way. Mm-hmm. And that was the reason that they were putting it into me. Wow. And... um. And so, you know, I, I had that, and then 
in 2004, the end of 2004, I'm driving to do a psychic party, and I'm kind of like talking to him and saying, well, you know, guys, it's been a long time since I've seen you, and you know I need to see to believe. <laughs> so I said, I really need to see you again. I go to the psychic party, and I leave, and I'm about an hour away from my home, and I get off of one highway onto another, and all of a sudden I see these lights in the sky. And it was like almost 1 o'clock in the morning. And at first I thought, well, maybe it was one of those um, openings of a store. And I went, oh, that's crazy. It's 1 o'clock in the morning. So I said to them, you stop, you need to stop showing yourself to me because I'm going to get into a car accident. <laughs> I said, if you are what I think you are, then you need to be at my house when I get home. So they stopped showing themselves to me. I drive home. It's about 45 minutes later. And I get here. And I couldn't wait to get out of the car to look. And I get out, and I look, and I don't see anything, so I'm disappointed. I walk to the front door to let the dog out, and I turn around, and there they are, right above me. Mm. And they were oh. uh, four lights, and they would form a pattern. They would come in like a cross, touch in the center, and each one of those lines would go out, and it would, it, they would then form like a, another circle at the bottom. Hmm. And they would do this. And then my daughter came out, and she was smart enough to say to me, Mom, tell them to move their pattern. So I did, and that's what they did. They moved, and then they went higher up, and they would go into this oval light and stay that way for a while before they would break their pattern. And they stopped the loop. And after the third time, the fourth time, they just stayed in that position and just went up into the clouds. Man, that's incredible. And then I, I sent that experience to a friend who, you know, is very much in the UFO field. And I didn't know he was going to send it off to somebody. And he sent it off to Dr. Stephen Greer. And he says, you'll get a, a, an answer. Mm -hmm. And about a month later, I got an email saying that, that there have been other reports of the same thing I described. And he said, you did indeed communicate with them. Mm. Wow. So uh, I'm about to tell them again, it's time. <laughs> I haven't seen them in a while. That's awesome. Uh, I think they're going to be in, in Egypt when I go there. Oh, That's absolutely. I mean. Yeah, I get that, too. You know, Joe Tones just, he said that pyramid name, and watch me butcher this, Tio I know yeah, I screwed yeah. that, but I apologize. <laughs> I <laughs> Joe calls back and tells me for nothing. Tio, I know, I can't. It's, it's okay. like one of those things that, that takes me a while to oh, get my tongue okay. to, yeah, to pronounce. It. Oh, but there it is. Okay, so now we know which one that is. But Yeah. yeah. That's, that's really fascinating. So you think a lot of the gifts were actually kind of transmitted to you through this extraterrestrial yes. contact, yeah? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Because my stomach started to go out right after this. My goodness. And it was interesting that my car and I was taken up. It was a whole car. Hmm. And from what I learned at the conference I went to, that when a car is taken up, the electrical system, everything goes bad on it. And this was a car that was only three years, and it blew three transmissions after that. Wow. I had to get rid of the car. They would put a transmission in, uh, just test drive it around the block, and it would blow. Hmm. So <laughs> the whole car was taken up. Amazing. Wow. Well, it's quite the gift you have, so you're meant to so what you're doing. So it's interesting. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, yeah. you know, so I'm, I'm waiting. I know there's going to be an, another time soon. Yeah, and do you think a crystal skull is actually, so they're kind of the initiators of that, or no? Yes, there's, there's yes, like I, I do feel. Okay. In fact, if you were to look right now on Coast to Coast Radio, mm -hmm. um, to the photo of the day, it's still up, you will see um, Maya's picture of the crystal skull with a UFO in it. Oh, wow, okay. And a face, if you were to put, you know, Coast to Coast, you know, up there on, your, on the Internet. Okay. You'd see the photo. And that was taken after the 101010 10, 10 Crystal Skull Conference hmm. and in 2010. And when I took the photo, the UFO appeared and there's faces that appeared and the skull had cleared so much because hmm. it was more milky white and it just got really clear. I need to see what's in there. Well, Joe just, as he's trying to correct me here, Teotihuacan. <laughs> yeah, that's it. There we go. <laughs> Ta da! <laughs> I'm learning something new every day. Say that three times fast, right? <laughs> I'm not going to pronounce it because I won't do it yet. Oh, butcher that. Oh, well. Okay, thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Okay. 
So let me see here. Where are we? Oh, I was going to ask you. Now I know you talk about the hypno counselor. You are a hypno counselor, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. Is that the same as a hypnotherapist, or are they? Yeah. Okay, yes. they are. Okay. It's yes. just in New Jersey, uh, the psychologists and you know, they stopped us from calling ourselves hypnotherapists, so we have to call ourselves a hypno counselor. Okay. Why is that? It's just a law that 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 they enacted because I guess that. Uh, you know, we were taking business away from psychologists. Oh, it's it's about 15 years now that that's been effect. So we don't call ourselves a hypnotherapist anymore in the state. We we'll call ourselves a hypno counselor. Okay. And how long do your sessions last with the hypno counseling? Uh, each session is about an hour. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And usually, any program is is, is about three sessions. Sometimes uh-huh. it's less. Sometimes it's just two sessions. Because I always make tape for the person to use. And do you actually, um, go, how do you put them under? Do you actually do the same thing with the transmission through the eyes, or is it something else? No, it's something else. I mean, you, I did that with the eyes because that's where I was, and I, I was just had to do something to help the mm-hmm. girl. Right. Uh, now I'll use the progressive relaxation method because that lends itself best to a tape mm-hmm. where they're just closing their eyes and they're being talked through mm-hmm. in, into hypnosis. Uh, through the words of the script. The other way I might do it is, is another eye fixation method is with the you know, hypnotic wheel. Mm-hmm. Where you have them stare at something uh, and, and again, talk them through until they close their eyes and you get them into a, you know, induction and you, make, you take them deeper with another kind of uh, imagery. Mm-hmm. Is it usually induction-based? Like, is it usually um, some type of an extraterrestrial thing? Or what, is it, what, what do they usually see you for? Oh, no, they'll see me for uh, things like confidence or okay. uh, smoking or stress, uh, things like this, or, you know, positive thinking or mm-hmm. for sports enhancement or a habit. And, of course, regression, past mm-hmm. life regression. That's wonderful. Do they have breakthroughs with this? Are you getting good results? Uh, yes. Yes, awesome. absolutely. Uh, to me, hypnosis is my love. It's how I started. Mm-hmm. And the effects of it is tremendous hmm. in how you can change uh, habits and improve yourself and develop psychic ability. That's uh-huh. even another, because you can. It's, hmm. it's because I've gone, I think it, I was facilitated in developing it because I can go into self-hypnosis so easily. I've used hmm. it for pain control. Nice. Yeah. So, um, you know, you can use it also for psychic development. It's amazing the power of the mind, how you can just about oh, do anything. Absolutely. Oh, it's unlimited, that, isn't it? Yeah, oh, that's what's really exciting like. when you realize that and mm-hmm. you just can use it to your advantage and, and create a better life. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, if I ever need to go under, I'll, I'm contacting you. I don't trust anybody. Okay. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very guarded, but I like you. You're fine. <laughs> you get the green light with me. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, one of the certifications I took was private, and it was just this, the, you know, the teacher and me, and he had never gone under hypnosis. Mm-hmm. And he used to make a big thing about that, that he had such control that he's never been in hypnosis. No one has ever been able to get him into hypnosis. Mm-hmm. So I thought that was odd. He does hypnosis, but he's never experienced it. So the thing was, he would teach me, and then I would have to do it to him. Mm-hmm. Well, I panicked because he went into hypnosis oh, wow. when I did it. And then I didn't go forward with it. And then he yelled at me, why didn't you do that? No one's been able to get me into hypnosis. But, you know, when he made such a big deal out of it that nobody does that and it's with his control issue, I got scared about what I put him in hypnosis well, when he went under. Wow. Well, so. Do people ever get stuck in hypnosis? I mean, it's not like... No. You, mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. No. Uh, it's, hypnosis is something you... Everybody's been through hypnosis. Mm-hmm. because every night before you go to bed, you must pass through the state of hypnosis in order to get to sleep. Mm-hmm. So it is that, that uh, feeling when your eyes are closed, you hear things going on in the room, but you're just not paying attention to them, and you're just allowing yourself to go into that altered state and then into sleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've experienced it, let's say, when you're driving a car, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you arrive at your destination, but you don't remember seeing anything on the road and how you got there. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're not paying attention to it. Right. Um, hypnosis also can be somebody watching TV, your spouse, your friend, and you're trying to get their attention and they're not 
so they're so engrossed in the show. Mm-hmm. That's another form of hypnosis. Mm-hmm. Is that so about the alpha state, is it, or no? Um, well, it, it is the start of it, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. But... Um, and if you, you'll go further and further into the states of the mind. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a start of the altered state of consciousness. When I go into the reading, like when I do a seance, mm-hmm. I do not remember what I've said mm. after I, like, it'll go by so fast. I remember it as I'm saying it to the person. Mm-hmm. But when I'm on to the next one, I forgot what I said to the previous person. Mm-hmm. Because I'm in an altered state of consciousness when I'm doing anything psychic. Right. That makes perfect sense. So it's, you know, your, your memory is not the same mm-hmm. in altered state of consciousness as in your wide awake state. Do they actually record the seances? Um, sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. It's hard to, because people speak low. Mm-hmm. And unless I had a professional person there handling uh, equipment, mm-hmm. I can't get a good recording. Right. Unless I did that. I haven't. I haven't done that yet. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. So have you ever filmed those? or? Well, for the TV show, uh, uh-huh. when I did Dead Penance, there was a seance at the end of each show. Uh-huh. And, of course, you know, professional videographers are going to get it because they would have three cameras on the circle uh-huh. so that they were covering it from every angle because you, you didn't know who was going to be feeling something and right. they would be ha- having to get up and go to that person. So there were three cameras, um, you know, taking it mm. so they would be able to get it. Interesting. Does they ever have problems with the cameras malfunctioning? Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes when spirit energy is present, sometimes it will cause that. I've heard that. Yeah, that cameras shut down and things like that. You know, yeah. I've had that happen. Uh, I think I've had it more with still cameras. Then video cameras, um, the, the camera will jam, and they can't take the photo, and they'll huh. come out of the energy, and then they'll try again. The camera's working, and then they get in front of me, and they can't, especially wow. when my stomach is out because its spirit energy is around. Wow, that's interesting. So we've had that happen hmm. on occasion. Pretty powerful. I'm, I'm really interested to see what happens when you go to Egypt. So you'll have to fill us in on all that. Oh yeah. Yeah. What kind of power you start generating in that pyramid? Because I'm sure it's yeah. going to be pretty intense. Yeah. It'll it's be all that. Pretty. It's going to be. Yeah. It's going to be pretty interesting. And you know, a lot of people don't realize that um, you had Moses and you had Jesus supposedly were initiates mm-hmm. of the mystery school, and right. that when when they finished and they went through the Great Pyramid of their initiation, that's when they started their ministry. Mm-hmm. Very true. So it's, it's we don't think in terms of that, but that's one of the other things about the Great Pyramid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the signature alone is incredible. That's mm-hmm. one of my, it's on my bucket list to go over there. You have to, should be going with you. <laughs> Definitely yeah. need to get over there. There's no doubt about it. So um, I'm going to ask you, would you say society in general is aware of unseen forces in this day and age, or do you feel they are oblivious to what is really going on, the bigger scheme of things on a multidimensional level? You know, a lot of people have tunnel vision, but I, I think they're awakening. But what's your take on that? I think that there are more and more people awakening to it. There's mm-hmm. definitely a, a major increase, mm-hmm. major increase in the past 10 years that I can see because people that before would not embrace this at all are starting to ask me questions. Mm -hmm. And so you you see it. You see the change going on. Yeah. It almost seems like their layers of their energetic field are opening up because of the the energetics going on with the planet. It's almost like they don't even have a choice anymore. So maybe that's one of the reasons they're contacting you. And it's good that you're there as a guide. You know, otherwise they get, you know, pretty disoriented. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. I'm sure it'll get worse, too. I mean, you know, all this energy bombardment. That, you know, obviously, you can anchor energy very, very well, but I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who can't. So, No, true. I, I'm, very, uh, I'm very grounded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I like about you. Say. Yeah, you're very analytical, too. I, I like that. You're not flaky. You're not like in la No, no, not at all. <laughs> I love that. I'm very grounded, too. And so it's like, you know, I, I mean, I can relate to more analytical people, for sure. Um, without, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And that's how I approached psychic ability was all uh, analytical, you know, mm-hmm. like how right. could be and things like that. And But it proved itself to me, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's definitely provable. There's no doubt about it. 
Um, so, and so far as um, arranging your homes to better align with the transmissions, like Feng Shui, you talk about the mirrors. Um, so that's little things you can do in the house to kind of boot up the energetic field and, and secure grids in the house. You would recommend the mirrors, or is there anything else you can recommend? Um, the selenite. Definitely okay. the selenite, right. because yep. the selenite, if you put the mirrors or if you put a piece of selenite on a t- in that room, it's going to change the energetic field in a positive way. Or even putting a selenite as a grid of the house, then it grids the house so that it's pure white light. Nice. That's so great. that's a you know would be a really good thing to do also. Yeah, I use crystals. and of course you have crystals. Yeah. Too. Yeah. yeah. I have a lot of little force fields around my windows in my house, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. little corners and things like that. So I do notice a difference though. If I don't have, if I don't have them out, I notice energetically. So something. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. There's no doubt about that at all. Um, so did you say you came from a psychic family or no? No, I can't say I did, but at the same time, I can say I did. <laughs> I don't want to say put it. My mother was very psychic, but she never called it psychic ability. Mm-hmm. So um, I grew up with her maybe seeing spirits at different times, like family members, and her making a prediction. But she would say it's just the way her mind works. Mm-hmm. So I never... We never call it a psychic ability. Right. Yeah. Um, so, but, you know, she had some level of it, definitely. Mm-hmm. There's no doubt about that. I'm sure it runs in the family. You know, my, my family is the same way. We, we, um, we never really talked about it, but it was there. <clears throat> There's no doubt about it. I just need to make a quick announcement uh, before we're getting ready to wrap this up pretty soon. Sure. Um, but I just want to let everybody know that next week on Raven Star's Witching Hour, my special guest is going to be Jeff Harvey. So we'll be doing a lot of communication on implants and things like that. And uh, stay tuned for Shiny Side Out with David Dunger and Mickey coming up next. But we still have a few more minutes. So is there anything in particular you want to you wanna talk about real quick to kind of wrap this up? It's been a pleasure, you know, Jane. I, I think that, you know, they have some of the information. As long as they know my website, mm-hmm. they're able to contact me with any questions they had or if they're interested in Egypt or they're interested in the tour to uh, Mexico City in June. Uh, and, you know, psychic development, if they, you know, want to want me to let them know when I'm doing it online. Definitely. You know, they can drop me an email, and uh, I will certainly let them know. Excellent. Yeah, I'll be interested in that. Also, and do you astral travel? I don't know if I asked you that or not. Um, I think I do. I don't I do not do it on purpose. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I feel that when you go to sleep at night and you have a very, very vivid dream of a deceased loved one, mm-hmm you are with them. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, that's what I feel. But I would not force myself to do it because you can, it depends. It, astral travel and out of body is the same, but out of body you are really, your your spirit energy is actually going and leaving your body. Mm-hmm. And it's very easy to not get back in fully. Mm-hmm. So it's not the same as having the silver cord attached uh, well, now it is where okay. you could, you know, you, you go out of body and you're traveling out there, but you're really traveling in the spirit world or you're really getting far out of your body mm-hmm. where you can run the risk of the cord being cut or getting back in your body that you don't completely mesh. Mm-hmm. And sense. then if you don't completely mesh in, then that's where you could get mental illness. Mm -hmm. because you're not quite there. Now, to me, astral travel is a little different because I think that you can mentally astral travel. Mm -hmm. To me, I make a difference because the real out-of-body is Mm out-of-body, you know, where that soul is out. And astral traveling, your soul can be out, but it it just doesn't go as far Mm -hmm. as in the other. I think that's really important that people pay attention to that. I know a lot of people play around with it. And really yeah. should be more aware of what's going on because it's like a, you know, it's busy out there. <laughs> Those other dimensions. Well, because they can force themselves out of body. Mm-hmm. And when they force themselves, they're, they're playing around with that energy field. Mm-hmm. So you can pierce it. You can, just like I use my stomach to release, you know, a possession, you're using that to go out of body. Mm-hmm. And so you are forcing yourself. Right. And that could be a problem. Mm-hmm. So you really need to be careful. You can become obsessed with that, too. Right. 
So in that process, you're, the forcing is what can do something to you if you force too much. Mm-hmm. I agree. I think it's more like consciousness in motion with me. Um, it's just a knowing, and it's probably a safer 